Well, hi everyone and welcome to our presentation today. Those of you who don't know me, my name's Emma Haig. I'm a Proctor Gallagher consultant working with Bob Proctor. You might know him from the film The Secret. And um, together we help individuals around the world live a life of true abundance. And I'm also the founding member of the Prosperous Oilers Essential Oils team. So the Prosperous Oilers team is a new young living team that I've put together to educate people about the amazing health and wellness benefits of essential oils, as well as helping people around the world start, run and grow an authentic business that they are 100% in love with, you know, while being part of a positive, supportive, successful team. I really wanted to be able to help people build their own business, but have that support from um, a mentor, from somebody who's doing it with them, from someone who's had success in the past. So we'll be focused on education in our Prosperous Oilers group and on making sure that you know how to use these phenomenal natural tools that have been given to us. So sit back, relax and enjoy this introductory webinar. So I've been using these oils myself for um, coming up to a year now and I have been just astounded at the impact they've had on, on my life and on my family's life, not to mention how much more productive, more focused and more clear-headed really I've been from a business point of view since I've been including them in my daily routine and really using them regularly. Um, I have just become completely obsessed with using these. Any of you who have followed me for any length of time will know how, um, how amazing I think they are and how, um, how much emphasis, I, you know, how much importance I put on using them on a daily basis to improve all areas of my life. And I'm on my own journey to live in a chemical-free lifestyle. And that really ties in really well with what we do in Thinking Into Results. Um, you know, the whole idea of living a life of true abundance in all areas of your life in includes living a long and healthy and happy life. And that means getting, re getting rid of, um, as far as I'm concerned, the chemicals that are all around us. So I first got my Young Living Starter Kit last summer uh, in 2019, and I started seeing results in my own life straight away. You know, we use oils in place of chemical cleaning supplies in our home. We've replaced every single chemical under our sink with one bottle of Thieves Cleaner. Um, all of them, you know, the window cleaner, the um, stuff to clean the sideboards, the stuff to clean the floors. I've just replaced all of them with one bottle of Thieves Cleaner. I use oil in place of supplements because an oil infused vitamin has got more benefits than supplement without oils in it. I use oils in diffusers around the house to manage emotions and manage stress to calm my family down, to help us get better sleep on a night time and to revitalize us on a morning. Um, I use them to get rid of cooking smells, dog smells. I use them in my skincare products, my toothpaste, shampoo, deodorant. In fact, essential oils can come in just about every product you can think of and you can use them in every corner of your home. And every oil that you use is a chemical that you're not using. So in this training, we're going to cover the big topics that you need to know to start to use your oils effectively. And the rest of it, you'll learn as you go by looking them up, using some of the amazing studies that have been reported on over recent years. And that they're just, there's more and more uh, studies, more research happening all the time into essential oils. So we'll talk a bit about what oils are and a bit about the history We'll cover oil purity and why that's so important. We'll talk about how oils are made, how they hit the body. We'll talk about safety. And I'll tell you where to start if you want to get oils into your home. So this is not about selling you a product. Okay, This is about my mission to bring prosperity to every home. Okay, True prosperity to every home. And prosperity isn't just about money, isn't just about income, it's about abundance in all areas of life. So let's learn about essential oils together 
from wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this. Um, so let's start right at the beginning. So what is an essential oil? Essential oils are the most powerful part of the plant. They are the lifeblood of the plant. So just like your blood clots, it clots your cuts, <laughs> it oxygenates your cells, and it detoxes your body. Oils do the same thing for the plant. They're distilled from shrubs, trees, flowers, herbs, roots, fruit, rind, resins, and oils consist of over a hundred natural organic compounds. Scientists have found that a banana has 17 different naturally occurring chemicals, and they're the part of the plant that enacts change. They photosynthesize, they work through trauma, they energize, and they can do similar things in the human body. In humans, oils can provide support for every system in the body. They provide support for your skeletal system, muscular system, brain health, your circulatory system, your respiratory system, your endocrine system and your hormones, and your immune system, importantly. They can help to work towards a healthy weight. They, um, you know, they help keep you healthy when you're surrounded by sick people through supporting your immune system. Oils can support every single organ in your body, your liver, your kidneys, your heart, your respiratory system, your colon, and they're used extensively for emotions and stress and for spiritual support. You know, I use them all the time in the personal development work that I do when I'm visualizing and meditating and relaxing. Uh, they help stop my mind wandering. You know, when I'm, when I'm trying to visualize, I'm trying to focus to help us stop my mind going off, thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner. Um, you know, think about when the car's due for its MOT and all the other junk that kind of interrupts us when we're trying to relax or to focus. When I use frankincense in my diffuser during these times, um, I'm really able to hone in on my goals and focus on what I need to do to achieve those. So it really plays a big, big part on an hourly basis, to be perfectly honest, in, in my life, in my personal life and my professional life. An oil in a diffuser can act in stealth mode to relax a child after a stressful day at school or provide a calming effect if you've had a busy day at work or you're just running around like a headless chicken or it seems to be common amongst the parent population. Uh, oils are used as an alternative to toxic chemicals in the home. You can literally use these cleaner, these, um, these household cleaner in place of any of the household sprays and liquids window cleaner fluid, bleach, and you can start swapping out every single cleaning toxin in your home to live a healthy, pure lifestyle without breaking the bank. So you buy one big bottle of Thieves Cleaner and you can get rid of all the sprays under your sink. So how do you use essential oils? Well, oils enter and leave the body medicinally and they leave no trace behind unlike chemicals. There are over 300 essential oils on the earth but you only need about 10 to 20 to create a really good kit for yourself at home and you don't have to be an aromatherapy expert. I'm not an aromatherapy expert. You don't have to be one to know how to use them. In fact in most cases you're just rubbing the oils topically on the skin, maybe diluted. So there are three main ways to get oils into your system. The English way is to apply it topically, which means to just rub it directly onto the skin. The French ingest and cook with them, which is probably the most controversial thing in the world of essential oils, and we'll talk about that later. And Germans diffuse and inhale them, which is actually the most effective method because they don't have to pass through the digestive system. They can get straight to the bloodstream. So how do oils enter our system and how long do they last? Well, Tests have shown that oils hit the heart, liver, and thyroid in three seconds when they were inhaled, three seconds. And they were found in the bloodstream in 26 seconds when applied topically. That's, that's a really, really quick effect. Expulsion of essential oils takes three to six hours in a normal, healthy body. So they, they hang around quite a long time. They do the work for a long time. And they will hang around for 14 hours if you're unwell. So your body will actually hold on to the oils a little bit longer if it knows you really need them. So a bit of history about essential oils. 
Well, they were first mentioned by name in the biblical book of Genesis when Joseph was told to the when Joseph was sold to the slave traders in chapter 37. They carried cedarwood, sandalwood, and myrrh with them. And Genesis ends with the burial of Joseph's father, who was anointed with myrrh essential oil. And of course, you know, we've all heard the story of Jesus being offered gold and frankincense and myrrh as a newborn. In fact, Jesus' title of Messiah means the anointed one which was a direct reference to the use of essential oils at the time. In total, they're mentioned over 1,100 times in scriptures. So people who say it's not biblical to use essential oils are sadly really misinformed. There are also records of one of the oldest cultures on earth using essential oils. The Babylonians placed orders for cedarwood, myrrh and cypress. The ancient Greeks believed that when they died, they went to Elysium, where the air was permanently filled with essential oils. The Egyptians used oils for beauty and balming and purifying bathhouses. In fact, the Egyptians had the oldest recorded deodorant recipe made from essential oils. Now, Egypt got most of their oils from China and India, and there's evidence that they were using oils a thousand years before the pharaohs. They were used by medieval Europeans. You know, many brought oils back during the Crusades, because of the molecular size, they're smaller than the cells in our body. So the, the molecules in essential oils are smaller than the cells in our body. They're even smaller than viruses, okay, which means they can penetrate into those cells because they're smaller. Oils can penetrate your skin more swiftly than any modern medicine on the planet because of their size. According to a recent study, essential oils can affect every cell in the body within 20 minutes and then they're metabolized like other nutrients. Okay, so they're just, you know, the body just gets rid of them eventually when it's taken what it needs from them like any other nutrients. So do oils actually work? Well, you know, I've used oils on and off since I, probably since I was a teenager and you know, lavender always smelled really nice on my pillow or in my bath. I can't honestly say I ever felt any real tangible benefits from that. And, you know, I buy, buy oils in pretty bottles from farmers markets, maybe from gifts for gifts for people. Um, I buy them in those big bottles from home stores, from Asda or Walmart, on Amazon, anywhere they have special offers on, basically, because I like the smell. And I you know, I kind of heard they were supposed to be good for you, so I believed that they must be doing me some good. Um, and I didn't want to pay very much for them, so I would just go on to, you know, wherever the cheapest place was to find them and, and get some of those to put in my bath or sprinkle on my pillow or whatever I wanted to, to, to do with it. But here's the thing. There's currently no real rating system for essential oils. Many of them claim to be pure, or 100% essential oil, but actually most off-the-shelf oils are really, really heavily diluted. There is nothing to say that they can't be called pure. So in the US, the closest to get to regulation is an FDA requirement that there must be 5% of the actual essential oil in the blend to label it as pure. So that means that the oil that you're buying could be 95% of some other carrier. It only has to have 5% essential oil in it for it to be labelled as pure. So it could be 95% made up of solvents, chemical extenders, you know, it could be total rubbish and it's absolutely legal, legal to call it pure. You just don't know what's in most of the essential oils you're buying, even if they say they're pure or they say they're 100% essential oils. And the scary thing is, you know, I know as a mum, I can go to the supermarket and pick up a box of cereal and turn it over and read a list of every component that's gone to make that product. You know, you can have a look and actually see what's in it so that you can make an informed decision. If you turn over an essential oils bottle, certainly in the US or the UK, there's just no such label. So you don't know if there's other things in that oil. So it's important that you do your own due diligence and you pick a company that you trust because anyone can say they sell 100% pure essential oils. And unless they've been involved in the production process right from the start, right from planting those plants, right through distillation to the end, um, you don't 
know the, the essential, that you don't know they're totally pure because they don't know they're totally pure. They can't say for definite they really are because they haven't had control over the whole process. So the only company I use and trust is Young Living because they've built a real amazing reputation of integrity over the last 25 years. You know, I just, I love the transparency of the company. I like the fact you can go visit any of their farms. They have a real open door policy. You can speak to any of their employees, ask any questions you want, go out into the fields and breathe it all in and really watch the entire process from seed to seal. You can see the process they have of harvesting these oils at the right temperature. And when Young Living comes along and they're gonna put a crop into a field, that land has to be completely virgin land, never touched before by chemicals. Then they put what they call an heirloom crop into the ground with no weed killers, no pesticides, nothing, no chemicals at all. And they often will get visitors to hand weed with them because it's all weeded by hand. These plants are so precious, um, you know, you need so many of them to be able to make these oils, but it's really important there's as little waste as possible and that there's as little damage as possible. So it's all weeded by hand so they get as many people to help as possible. And then when it gets close to harvest time, they never really know in advance exactly when the crop is going to be perfect for harvesting. You know, that's just the nature of the, of the beast. So they will send the scientists out into the field every single hour at many of the farms to micro distill every hour, micro distill a little, a little part, a little portion of the plants and see if that crop's reached its peak condition. See if it's at the point where it's the absolute best quality it can be. And small family businesses just can't do that. They just don't have the resources, you know, the little family businesses that you see at farmers, they're selling at farmers markets or selling on eBay or Etsy or, or any of those kind of websites. Those small businesses just can't do that. They don't have the resources to send people out every hour around the clock for weeks on end, which is one of the many benefits of having such a large operation. So then when they show the crops absolutely the best it can be, they bring it in. It's all hands on deck and they distill it at the perfect temperature. Why does temperature matter so much? Well, let's take Cypress as an example. If you distill Cypress at the right temperature, it's got 288 naturally occurring chemical compounds that are not change in the human body. If you warm that up 10 degrees too warm when you're distilling or 10 degrees too cold, it's got 11 because it destroys the vast majority of the naturally occurring compounds. So it's really, really important that it's distilled at the right temperature. And that's where most oil companies make the biggest mistake. It's in the distillation process. They're trying to save a few dollars here and there on their oils. Um, so they'll use chemical solvents to distill it, or they might dilute it with a carrier. Okay, They're trying to extend, they're trying to... Um, increase the amount of oil they've got to be able to sell. So when you get a young living oil, you're getting 100% guaranteed pure essential oil. There is nothing else in there. There's no carrier, no chemicals. It comes straight from the farm, straight to you. And that's one of the things that I love so much about young living as a company. You can actually tell this um, when you get, you know, if you say you buy a, a couple of different bottles of peppermint for example none of them smell exactly the same it's really interesting and you know, I find it quite fascinating and that's because you know they haven't been made in a lab like a lot of essential oils they haven't been created they've been harvested and all the plants all have a very slight different smell so depending on the combination of plants that have been distilled together you get a very slight very slight variation on the on the smell when you smell them so other companies will label their product 100% pure, but there's just no way to say for sure that it is, even if they think it is. If they haven't got control over that whole process, they can't guarantee it. So the oils, all the oils on the earth fall into four different categories, grade A, B, C or D. Grade A is therapeutic or medicinal which means it's made from organically grown plants and it's distilled at low temperatures. So if you, if you heat that oil up, you're going to destroy it. You're going to break down the properties within it 
and then it's not going to provide the same effect on the human body. If you take a look at some of the reviews of other essential oils, you'll sometimes see comments like very weak smell or doesn't smell of anything or smells like alcohol. There is no mistaking at all a truly pure essential oil. The smell of a pure essential oil is never ever weak and it smells of what it's supposed to smell of. <laughs> grade B oils are actually food grade, but they can contain synthetics, pesticides, fertilizers, chemical extenders or carrier oils. So again, if a, if a company doesn't have control over the whole process, from planting the seeds, they can't say for definite what pesticides have been used. And if, if pesticides are used on plants, that stays with the plant all the way through the process. So, you know, you can say, why on earth would they spray something like this? It's going to be used in essential oils. Why would they spray it with fertilizer or pesticides or anything else when they're growing something that's supposed to be good for you? And the answer is the same reason they do it to your food. You know, when you go to the supermarket, unless you're buying everything organic, you're getting food that's been sprayed. And we know what's in that spray. Many of those chemicals can cause cancer in the human body. They can be really dangerous. Um, so you can imagine if they're spraying those things on essential oils and you're going to put them on your body or you want to get them into your body somehow, and they've got these pesticides, fertilizers, traces of those things on them, and you're inhaling them or taking them internally or, or spreading them on your skin, that can cause a real scary problem. The difference between spraying um, crops of food with fertile, or you know, using fertilizers and pesticides, pesticides or crops of food, um, the difference between that and crops that are going to be used in essential oils, you know, if you imagine, let's take an, uh, eating, an exam, eating an apple as an example, um, you know, say at some, at some stage that apple's been exposed to a pesticide. So you're ingesting a very small amount of pesticide. Plus, it'll have been washed, might have been cooked. So it ends up being a very small amount that actually gets into your body in the end. Conversely, if you imagine it takes 60,000 rose blossoms to make just one ounce of rose oil. So when you're using an essential oil that contains pesticides, it's like eating the whole apple tree that's been sprayed with pesticides, not just one apple. You're getting the pesticides that have been sprayed on 60,000 rose blossoms, all put into that one little bottle. And remember, however you apply the essential oils, they are getting into your bloodstream, they're getting into your organs. So this is why it's so important that you know and trust where your oils are coming from. It comes down to one word and that's concentration. It's the concentration of those oils versus the food that you're eating. And that's why Young Living has a no chemicals policy. All of their oils are grade A oils. So grade C oils are perfume oils and they often contain adulterated chemicals and they're usually solvents like hexane that they use to get a higher yield for harvest. Now hexane has been banned by a lot of countries around the world, but not all countries, notably not in the US, but it's one of the solvents that's been strongly linked to cancer and it's what's in a lot of shop-bought oils. So if you ever open a bottle of essential oil and you get that sort of alcohol smell from it, there's a good chance it was distilled using a solvent of some kind because they need to add alcohol to aid the distillation process when they're using solvents. Grade C oils are also typically diluted with 80 to 95 percent alcohol and there are many many reports of people actually feeling a bit tipsy while they're using cheap oils because as you can imagine a high percentage of alcohol like that is just not good for you especially when you're inhaling it and it's going straight into your bloodstream. So grade C oils typically diluted with 80 to 95 percent alcohol and then there's grade B oils, which they're made from floral water and they're really just for aromatic purposes and they're usually a byproduct of grade A distillation. So you've got this amazing company like Young Living that will come in with this beautiful heirloom crop, harvested at the perfect time, distilled at the perfect temperature, using no chemicals in the ground, all hand weeded. And they put all the oil, they pull all the oils out of it, and then what's left is basically wastewater. You know, there's nothing in there that will do anything for the human body. And other companies will buy that floral water 
and we'll put 5% of the floral water in a bottle, top it up with a carrier oil and label it as therapeutic grade or organic or pure or all natural. And it's a totally different oil. It's a really watered down waste product that still smells, it still has, has the distinctive smell and they will dilute it, um, you know, top it up with a carrier oil and label it as pure. And it's totally different to what you would get in a grade A oil. They're just not even comparable, but there's nothing to say they have to label them any differently. So that's what you're getting a lot of the time when you're buying those large bottles of essential oils online or down the supermarket. You know, the, the, the only thing they do is provide a nice smell. They don't provide, they don't have the purity to be able to provide the real health benefits that you can get from, from true, truly pure essential oils. And, you know, to sell those big oils, big oils, those big bottles, um, say of lavender oil, you know, a 20 ounce bottle of lavender. Say you, you know, you go to Walmart or you go down to Home Centre or whatever and you're looking at a really big bottle of lavender. I mean, a, a really big bottle of pure lavender would just be thousands and thousands of pounds. You wouldn't be able to afford it if it was the real stuff, the real pure stuff. So as with anything, price is often some indication of quality in these cases. If it seems super cheap, I'd be asking myself how they're managing that because essential oils take such a lot of work to harvest that the pure stuff is not cheap. Grade A oil is the only true pure oil. It'd be like going to the fridge and taking out a carton of freshly squeezed orange juice because you feel like it's healthy for you and then diluting it 90% with water before you drink it. You're just not getting the full benefits of the orange juice and people you know people ask honestly does it really matter does it really matter whether you're getting um you know five percent or 100 percent essential oils and you know if i was going to take essential oils internally they will say you know yeah if i'm going to eat them if i'm going to put them on something i'm going to eat if i'm going to drink them okay then i might be i might be bothered i might i might go for 100 percent. i might buy from your living but if I'm just going to diffuse it to make my house smell nice, is it really that big a deal? And you know, my answer, honestly, would be yes. If you imagine putting oils in your diffuser that your family is then going to ingest quickly, because inhalation is a really quick process, it gets into your bloodstream really quickly. You know, I don't want my family ingesting that level of chemical extender or alcohol or pesticide um, you know, remember it, we said it takes just three seconds for these oils to reach your organs when they're inhaled. So would you want your kids to be breathing that in for hours at a time? Now, I have my diffusers going on all day. And the only reason I do that is because I know that the oils that are in there are absolutely pure and they are working wonders for me and my family. I wouldn't want to think that I was running diffusers all day when there's chemical, potentially chemicals in there that I don't know about and that we're ingesting them into our body. So this is why it's so important that you know and trust where your oils are coming from. Okay, before you buy, you need to check to see if the company grows their own plants and owns their own fields and controls the entire process from seed to seal, from the farm to the bottle, because pesticides and previous pollution and previously farmed land, because remember, you know, once a, a once um, land has been polluted, it takes years and years and years for that pollution to grow. So if suddenly somebody starts growing plants on that polluted land for essential oils, that pollution is going to get into the plant and it's going to follow through the process. And all of that can affect the quality of an essential oil. You know, you need to check whether the company themselves can honestly vouch for the purity of their oils, you know, and they can only do that if they control the whole process. So why do some oil companies sell oils more cheaply? Uh, well, it's because they want to sell more, you know, um, and how do they do it? Well, you know, you can produce oils for um, far less money when you spray your crops with pesticides because you've got more healthy crops to distill. Okay, so that's why, you know, they're, they are ensuring that they have more healthy crops, uh, healthy in inverted commas, have more crops that they can distill if they haven't been um, destroyed by pests. Um, if you use a solvent to extract the oil from the plants, it's quicker, easier and cheaper to get more oil out. So 
So that's why some companies use solvents to extract the oil, but then you're polluting the oil with the solvent in the process. If you dilute the essential oils with a cheaper oil or with carrier oil, then you can stretch that oil that you've distilled. So you can make it go further, you can sell more and you can sell it cheaper. So basically oils are sold more cheaply because companies cut corners, sometimes dangerously so, but there's no one to stop them doing that currently. And that might change in the future, but at the moment there's nobody really stopping them doing that. So, you know, Many people just can't wrap their minds around the concept that all oils are not made equally. You know, that's why people go by price quite often and will go on and just search on Amazon or whatever for the, for the cheapest option. My response to that would be, well, we already know that not all food is made equally. You know that if you go to a supermarket and you buy the cheapest battery produced eggs, they're not the same as buying organic free range eggs with that almost luminous orange yolk that you get. If you go for the cheapest factory reared minced beef, it's just not the same as opting for organic grass fed steak. You know, it's just not the same product. It should, should be, but you just know that the stuff in that minced beef to make it cheaper and that goes into the process to make it cheaper, that just shouldn't be there. And you make a decision. You make an informed decision and it's the same with essential oils. You have to make an informed decision if you're going to use essential oils for the benefits that they can provide. You know, you want to make sure you trust the company that you're working with and that's why I use Young Living. So let's get into how oils are made. Well, it takes a huge amount of work to produce just a tiny amount of essential oils and you can see this on the farms. You can actually go to Young Living Farms and see this process. It takes 60,000 rose blossoms to produce one ounce of rose oil. Lavender is abundant. 220 pounds provides seven pounds of oil. Jasmine flowers, I love this, jasmine flowers have to be picked by hand before the sun becomes too hot on the first day that they open. And that means it's one of the most expensive oils in the world. You can imagine the work that goes into picking jasmine flowers by hand before the sun becomes too hot on the first day that they open. Imagine the, the focus and the dedication that has to go into farming uh, jasmine flowers. It takes 8 million hand-picked blossoms to produce 2.2 pounds of jasmine oil. 8 million hand-picked blossoms to produce 2.2 pounds of oil. A sandalwood tree has to be 30 years old and 30 feet high before it can be cut down to be distilled, but a little bit goes a long way. And this is the real point with this. A little bit goes a long, long way. So most oils that Young Living sell are between sort of eight pounds and 20 pounds a bottle. Most single oils are between eight pounds and 20 pounds a bottle. Now a five milliliter bottle, which is what comes in a Young Living starter kit, has about 90 drops in it, minimum 90 drops in it. A 15 milliliter bottle has about 250 drops in it. And each application that you, that you do, you know, when you're inhaling it or you're putting it in food or you're putting it on your skin, you literally are using one to three drops at a time. That means even a small bottle will get you between 45 and 90 applications. So you really do get a lot of value, you get a lot of use out of these pure oils because you don't need to use as much. These cleaner is organic. I love these cleaner. I use it for absolutely everything. Um, it's organic and it costs about £1.20 a bottle to make up. So you buy a big bottle of these cleaner and you dilute it and make sprays and other bottles and put it in jars and whatever you want to use it for. And it ends up costing about £1.20 a bottle to make up. You can't you can't even get that in the organic section of the supermarkets. And that replaces flash, windoline, domestos, you know, all the, um, all the things that you would use around your kitchen, spraying the units down, washing the floors, cleaning your windows, cleaning the oven top, hob, um, everything that, that you use in your kitchen and in your bathroom, I would say. Um, and, and it replaces all the organic versions of those as well, because there's just no chemicals in it. And, you know, organic versions, if you wanted to look at the organic version of those things in the supermarket, they'll cost you like, 
between three and five pounds a bottle if you're looking for the organic version so it even beats the organic version of those popular kind of cleaners uh, in the supermarket so most oils average 12 to 30 pence a drop and that's how you use them you use them by the drop not by the spray or by the capful. If you want to learn about how to get your oils for free, I'm gonna be taking my Young Living members through my Young Living Prosperity Mastermind program for free. And I'll tell you how you can join us at the end of the program. So how do oils work when they hit the body? Well, when a fragrance is inhaled, those odor molecules will travel up your nose where they get trapped by olfactory membranes, which are actually neural receptors. And they send messages to the brain and each molecule fits like a jigsaw piece into a specific cell receptor site that's lining the membrane in the epithelial lining of the nose. Each of these nerve cells are replaced by your body every 28 days. So if oils are so powerful, can they damage your skin cells? Well, no, because the skin cells that touch the oils are constantly shed. When stimulated, the nerve cells will trigger electrical impulses to the gastritory center of the human brain, where the sensation of taste is perceived, and to the amygdala, where emotions are stored in that limbic lobe, lobe of the brain. Because the limbic system is directly connected to parts of your brain that control your heart rate, and your blood pressure, and your breathing, and your memory, and your stress levels, and your hormones, pure essential oils can have a profound physical, physiological, and psychological effect on the human body. This is how, because they go through the brain. The sense of smell is the only one of the five physical senses connected directly to that limbic lobe of the brain, the emotional control center. So it explains why some fragrances evoke memories and emotions before we're even consciously aware. You know, you smell something that just brings back memories really quickly. So are essential oils safe? Well, there are certain oils that are photosensitive, which means you won't want to put them on your skin and then go outside in the sun straight away. Uh, they're mostly citruses like grapefruit and lemon and bergamot. Um, you know, you just have to be careful. Don't put them on and go outside in the sun and garden for three or four hours because you might end up with blistering skin and that will not be nice. So some of them, like citrus oils, are photosensitive. And, you know, I would suggest that everyone test the oils first to see how your body responds to them. First time you use them, you'll want to use a carrier oil to dilute them a little bit just to, to test them out to make sure that you don't have any reaction to them. So there are two types of oils on the earth. There are fatty oils and then there are essential oils. So fatty oils are oils like coconut oil or jojoba oil, which is very good skin oil, or olive oil. Those aren't the same things as essential oils. Essential oils are very, very tiny molecularly and fatty oils are very large, very large molecularly. So if you ever put an essential oil on your skin and you get a bit of redness or soreness, you know you need to dilute it with a few drops of carrier oil. Uh, you know, one of those fatty oils like olive oil, slow down the absorption of the essential oil into your skin. So you can just rub um, olive oil or something like that over the top if you, if you get um, any kind of reaction. So your body can't draw in the fatty oils quite so quickly as the essential oils. And that's why we dilute it because it slows down the, um, the rate that it gets into your skin. And remember the amazing thing about essential oils is that they have such small molecules that can be absorbed into the cells of skin. Fatty oils can't because they're made up of larger molecules. And that's why they leave that greasy layer on your skin. They, they take a long time to work their way in essential oils get in straight away. And the nice thing about it is they don't leave a greasy layer on your skin, they just get absorbed and they're gone, you can't see them. As a matter of course, um, I would always dilute oils for children because their skin's a bit more permeable, so it absorbs the oil even more quickly. And my favorite place to put oils on my kids is on their feet. Uh, it's a very gentle place to apply them because the skin's a bit thicker down there, a bit tougher down there. Uh, they're in the routine now, you know, they come, when I uh, go and put them to bed at night time, they lift their feet up and I put thieves oil underneath their feet to keep them healthy and um, to let it work on their immune system during the night time. 
There are some oils that you might not want to diffuse because they're just really strong, like cinnamon or oregano. You know, oregano, if you put that in the diffuser, it is like inhaling a pizza. So you might not want to do that. <laughs> it's very, very strong, but it is incredibly good for you, I have to say, oregano. Be aware of putting the oils topically near your eyes or any sort of membrane parts of the human body, inside your ears, near your private parts. You don't really want to put oils in those places. They're just not really designed to tolerate strong oils. Um, some oils, like peppermint, can cause a burning sensation. And, you know, I am the first person, even though I've been doing it every day for months now, I'm the first person who puts peppermint on the palms of my hands to inhale it on a morning and then puts my fingers in my eye or puts my hands up near my eyes with my eyes open and it is not pleasant. Okay, but I just insist on doing it. I don't know why I do it every single day, but don't do that. Okay, so some oils like peppermint can cause like a burning sensation. It's not damaging your eye, but it does cause a burning sensation. So if you are placing an oil near your eye, you know, on your face, use a cotton bud or a toothpick or something like that instead of tipping the bottle near your eye or even using your fingers I'd say you don't want you don't want to put that oil straight in your eye because it will not be nice. You can also become desensitized to an oil if you're using the same one day in day out for a long period of time so I would rotate your oils out every three or four days. You know, there are lots of oils that can do the same uh, job um, lots of oils that do multiple jobs, so you've got loads of choice. You can just use one for three or four days um, to support a certain system and then swap in, in a few days' time and then swap back so that you're just kind of alternating it so that your body doesn't become too desensitised to it. So what about the internal use of essential oils? Now, this is quite controversial. Um, NAHA in the US and the aromatherapy bodies in the UK do not advocate for internal use. Now, why is that? Well, because over 90% of all essential oils companies are not safe for internal use. You know, we've talked about the quality of the oils. We've talked about the pesticides and the fertilizers and all the dangerous chemicals that are potentially locked up in a lot of those oils. You don't want to be taking those internally because you don't know what they could do to you. So the vast majority of oils have things in that you don't know about. And that's why these bodies don't want you to take them internally. Also, most essential oils aren't food grade. You know, they're not certified as, as food. So you shouldn't be putting them in your body. But Young Living now has an FDA certified line of oils called Vitality that actually are certified as food grade and they've been proven safe for internal use. So when these bodies are making recommendations to cover an entire industry, they have to make broad sweeping statements and you know, lots of aromatherapy and other regulatory bodies around the world base their recommendations around UK studies actually, that say that oils should only be used for topical use, you know, applied to the skin. But when you look into those studies, you realize that they're done using extremely high doses of oils or in ways that the oils just wouldn't be used, like pouring an entire bottle inside the human body to see what happens. You know, they really go to extremes to test, um, to test these things, to test the danger, potential danger in these things. And they've got the reasons for doing that. But Young Living utilises all three methods. We use British, French and German methods. And the French have been safely using essential oils internally for decades. And that's what I do. Now, the other side to this is if you're having a look at the ingredients list on the back of any bottles you might have in your bathroom or your kitchen. You now, we put things every single day on our skin and into our bodies that contain really damaging chemicals. And they've been approved by, by the bodies that oversee them. So the average woman applies over 300 chemicals a day to her body just through four things, through soap, makeup, shampoo, and hair care. And 80 of those chemicals are before breakfast. Essential oils have one ingredient, it's just lemon, or tangerine, or thyme, or lavender. There is nothing else in the bottle but distilled plants. So when people ask if they're safe, the answer is yes, 
they are very, very safe. Make sure you're not using photosensitive oils outside or dropping oils into your eye or on other sensitive areas. Use your common sense when you're putting them on children, but I would still pick an essential oil over a chemical any day in my home. And I do. So if you want to get some of these into your house and you're not really sure where to start because there are so many to choose from, um, I recommend a premium starter kit and that includes a home diffuser and you can get that by going to youngliving.com, click on become a member and then there are two fields that need filling in for sponsor and enroller. So what you need to do is ask the person who sent you to this video, who sent you to this webinar, ask them for their ID number, their member ID number, and you enter it in the field for sponsor and in the field for enroller. Um, and once you've done that, you'll be joining my team um, and I will arrange a one-to-one -one call with you to walk through that starter kit when you get it and explain exactly how you can use those oils. So what comes in a Young Living Starter Kit? Well, you get a diffuser, which is fantastic. I have three diffusers around my house. I diffuse all day long. It's, my, it's the best way, as far as I'm concerned, to not only get those amazing oils into your system, but also create a really nice environment. You know, they smell absolutely amazing. Um, you get a diffuser and you're going to get 11 different oils. And these are the full bottles, you know, the, the five milliliter bottles are not little sample bottles. It is incredible. The starter kit is just the, the best value for money that you can get. Um, the diffuser and just two bottles of those oils alone are worth the value of the entire kit. It is a phenomenal. It works out something like 50% saving if you buy the oils as a, as a starter kit. Um, so I strongly recommend you go for the kit. And, you know, there's no, I wouldn't say there's no point just getting one or two oils, but you really want to experience the whole thing. You want to see how they work together. You want to try them in different areas, try taking them in different ways. Um, plus you get the use of the diffuser, which is the, you know, as I say, it's the, the number one way I use oils in my home. And the diffusers themselves are um, almost worth the value of the kit. So which oils come in that starter kit? Let's have a look. So frankincense comes in the starter kit. That is one of the top skin oils. It helps to smooth skin. It's also a key ingredient in Young Living's brain power blend. You can diffuse it during meditation or visualization or prayer to help with grounding and purpose. And I always tell people, if you don't know what oil to put on, Try a couple of drops of frankincense and see what happens. You know, it's, it's like the go-to oil, we call it frank. So, you know, we say, I'm really missing frank. <laughs> oh, I really need some frank. Um, because it's just, it's such an amazing all-arounder. And this is the one that I use. In fact, I've got it in my diffuser as I'm speaking to you. If you can hear it whirring, that's got frankincense in it because it helps me it helps me to relax, but it also helps me to focus. So what else is in the starter kit? Lavender is in the starter kit. You can diffuse this for a calming, soothing scent. I diffuse this um, an hour before bedtime to help get the kids to sleep. And then I actually move it into our room and I have it going all night um, with lavender in. You can add a couple of drops to your bath. It is the oil of relaxation. It's also one of the top oils to support healthy skin. And it's known as a Swiss Army knife of essential oils for all of its uses. It can help soothe burns. Um, it's just, it has so many uses, but primarily it's known for its um, relaxing uh, effects. Peppermint. Peppermint is one of my favourites. Um, I use this multiple times a day and it supports the gastrointestinal system and healthy bowel function. So if your tummy's off, I'd be using peppermint on it. It helps with enhanced healthy gut function and it maintains the efficiency of the digestive tract and it may help support performance during exercise. So if you're an athlete, if you like running maybe, put some peppermint on the back of your neck, right at the top of your spine before you go out and see what happens. It is just amazing. I use peppermint on a morning when I get up. I put a couple of drops in my hands and I inhale them, inhale it, 
um, you know, nice deep inhale of peppermint avoiding your eyes, as I've already said, it will wake you up like nothing else. And when you put it on the back of your neck, you get this um, cool, um, refreshing feeling going all the way down your back. It's just phenomenal. And I also use it to cool my dog down. It has a real cooling effect. So loads of um, loads of different uh, uses of peppermint. Purification. Um, you can use purification to freshen the air. It's really good for making up air fresheners. I have this in my bathroom. I have purification and citrus fresh together in a little spray bottle. We use an air freshener because I wanted to get rid of those horrible, toxic, awful smelling bathroom sprays that, that you can buy you can just I tell you once you start using these kind of products um if you ever go back to the, the chemical ones or you know the the normal ones on the, the cleaning aisle you can really tell the chemical it really hits the back of your throat you you, you become really um aware of that kind of toxic effect that it, that it has on you so you can use purification to freshen the air um, I diffuse it when I come in from a wet walk with the dog. Um, it eliminates odours. So I put a couple of drops in my husband's work boots when he gets home. You can add it to a carrier oil and massage it onto your feet to soothe them. Um, you can use it in a carrier to moisturise your skin. Um, you can use it to uh, in a spray to keep insects and things away when you're outside. Um, you know when you're trying to eat outdoors. Uh, so another really good all-rounder, but um, specifically for sort of um, getting rid of smells, getting rid of odours, getting rid of toxins, I suppose, is the way to, best way to describe it. Thieves. Thieves is my absolute favourite oil and um, Thieves products are just phenomenal. This is, well, you see it says Thieves Vitality, this is what I was talking about. When I was talking about the food line that we have. Um, so this line in the white bottles that says Vitality, these have been um, graded in a way that means that they can be taken internally. So these are the ones to look out for if you're wanting to take things internally. And it helps support a healthy respiratory system. This you know, I, I use this so often. I go through so many bottles of thieves um, because even though you only use it a tiny, tiny amount at a time, I use it for everything. I have thieves, especially at the moment. I have thieves diffusing in two rooms all day long to keep nasty things away. I put it on the soles of my feet before I go to bed. I put it on the soles of my kids' feet. Um, my mum has started buying these because she has all kinds of ailments and she's noticed that it's really helped her to, to use it on a regular basis um, you can add a drop of Thieves Vitality into hot drinks to give them a really nice kind of spicy kick um, and it helps to support overall wellness when it's taken as a dietary supplement in particular this is the one that we use to help support your immune system so really really important at the moment um, and I find it just creates this atmosphere this this really comforting it's almost a Christmassy type smell it's got clove in there and cinnamon and all these kind of smells that are almost a bit Christmassy really nice comforting smell to have around your house rather than burning candles which are really not good for you and we'll speak more about later next in the starter kit is stress away stress away it's, what an amazing smell this is it's a mix of lime and vanilla which sounds like a strange combination. I will use this as a daily scent now instead of chemical laden perfumes. You know, I used to wear Obsession by Calvin Klein for years. That was the perfume that I used. Now I wear a few drops of Stress Away or a few drops of Joy or, I mean, I just generally use essential oils instead. And I carry Stress Away in a roll-on to keep topping up during the day. Um, I use it to um, calm my dog down when she's stressed. If she's going to the groomer, if she's just come back from the groomers, I, I stroke stress away through her fur and she loves it. It really, I, I massage the back of her neck with it and um, send her into a little trance. Um, it's just phenomenal. The results that we get from people, the, the feedback we get from people from using this, particularly people who suffer from anxiety or stress, it's just amazing. It is a wellness oil and it can be a part of a daily health regime and it's one of the top emotional oils. 
you know, when your day's a bit off, you open that bottle, take some deep breaths and the stress goes away. Next is lemon. Lemon oil enhances the flavour of foods and water. It's a key ingredient in Thieves and Lingshire Red. It's got a citrus flavour and it may help to support the immune system. It's one of my favourite oils for degreasing things. I stick it in the bottom of my pans when I'm trying to get the stuff off the bottom. Um, I can get greasy handprints off the wall with it, get grease off the kitchen tiles. I actually add lemon oil to my Thieves cleaner to the spray that I use on the hob and on the tiles because it just adds an extra sort of grease attacking power to it. So really good at, at, at attacking grease. Um, you know, it's a, it's a well-known natural degree, degreaser is lemon oil. In fact, that's why a lot of chemical cleaners are called lemon fresh or something like that, or they're scented to, to smell like lemon. You know, they don't actually usually have citrus oil in them, but they'll have that artificial perfume to make it smell like they do because it's a well-known fact that it's, an, it's a natural degreaser. Pan away. Pan away, you can apply this after exercise, after exercise to soothe your muscles. It's got a very stimulating aroma to it. It smells a little bit like, um, I always think it smells like liniment, you know, that rugby players use to rub on the legs. Um, reminds me of being young because that was a rugby player. Um, you can apply it to the back and to the neck for a soothing aromatic experience. And it also supports the appearance of healthy skin conditions. And this is, Pan away is the one that, um, is included in a cream called Cool Azul, and that's like a pain relief cream that we have. It's um, really, really good for use after exercise or any painful parts. <laughs> so the, the Cool Azul cream, um, it is designed specifically to soothe aches and pains without any horrible chemicals. So, you know, um, you I'm trying to think of an example. We have in the UK, we have something called Deep Heat, which is like a heat. A heat rub and it does kind of the same thing but with absolutely no chemicals and no possible side effects you know when you you read all those awful possible side effects on medicines and on things you buy from the chemist um you know none of that comes when you're using essential oils so copaiba is next in the starter kit. I mean, these are all the these are all the oils you get in that kit just to get you started. You know, and they'll last you oh, a good few months probably. And Copaiba promotes overall wellness. It's an oil you can only get from Young Living, and it supports nearly every system in the human body. It actually comes from special trees in South America, and it's a great skin oil. Loads of other health benefits as well. Digize is another one that I love. Um, Digize is a top oil for supporting your digestive system. I use this to soothe heartburn and indigestion. Um, you can add two drops to water with a drop of peppermint for a stimulating beverage, or you can take it in a veggie capsule. Um, I use the lengthy veggie capsules that I put essential oils in, and this is one of them that I will frequently use. I'll put Digize in a, in a veggie capsule. And if you take it with each meal, it will support your digestive wellness. Ah, see, some people buy the starter kit just for this one. Um, this supports a healthy respiratory system. So think of times when you might use uh, Vicks Vapor Rub if you're in if you're in the UK, or Olive Oil, or things like that. Things that were, where you might need a little bit of extra respiratory support, maybe feeling a little bunged up. Um, you can diffuse it for a comforting aroma. It actually contains four different eucalyptus oils. Um, you can rub it on the feet, you can rub it on the chest, and it encourages an atmosphere of comfort, really like our sea. We use this a lot in the winter in our house. So this might be a bit overwhelming to you. You know, you just survived, what, an hour <laughs> of me talking to you about really the absolute basics of essential oils and i'm sure some of you just want to get started trying them out so where do you start well i mentioned a little while ago that i recommend the premium starter kit i mean there are so many products that young living have and you can see on the slide there it's not just the essential oils themselves but we have oil infused products that cover everything you can probably think of to do with personal care cleaning health and wellness, weight management, 
um, relaxation. There's just there's so many different oil infused products. There are hundreds and hundreds of them. So the starter kit is definitely the way to go. And, you know, order one. Order one, get it in your hands and really start to play with it at home. See for yourself what these oils can do. And you will really quickly get into the habit of reaching for the oils instead of reaching for the toxic chemicals in your home. I reach for oils now for everything. I haven't touched any kind of painkillers or uh, any other kind of um, chemical that I would normally put in my body. Um, or, you know, chemical cleaning products, chemical skincare products, hair care products, toothpaste. I haven't touched any of those for months now. I just immediately go and look at what, see what Young Living has whenever I need anything. Um, and you will get, you'll get into the habit of doing it, reaching for the oils and seeing the benefits that you get from them. If you can stretch to a bottle of Thieves Cleaner to add to your order when you order your starter kit, you can immediately get rid of all the chemicals under your kitchen sink and in your bathroom. Now you take one cap full of Thieves and dilute it with water in a spray bottle and it, you know, it makes over 20 different spray bottles of cleaner. It's what I use on my floors. As I said before, you know, I was always wary of using chemicals because of my dog, but this is, I use this instead. I use it on my windows, kitchen worktops, in the bath, the sinks, to clean the toilet, everything. You can spot clean your clothes with it if you spill food on them. And there is nothing in it but oils. I use the spray to keep insects away. I use it, you know, we are prone to get ants in our house and I use it on the ants. Um, it's just a, a non-chemical way and it works brilliantly. Um, there's clove in it, lemon, cinnamon, eucalyptus and rosemary. There's nothing in it that's going to hurt you or your kids or your pets. And it smells like Christmas. You know, it's just a much better choice than all those chemicals under your sink. So if you want to start with really small baby steps, that's a really good place to start just with your cleaning supplies, just getting rid of those chemicals and getting one bottle of thieves to do that. And I actually have a month by month swap out guide. So for those people who do become a member, um, it makes it really easy, you know, and, and economical because you can gradually make that change from chemicals to essential oils in all different areas of your life, you know, to do it all in one go would be a pretty huge thing to do so i recommend that you do it over a few months just a little bit at a time as things run out as you run out of the chemical things you replace them with the essential oil products so let's just get serious for a minute okay why is it so important that we start to look at removing these chemicals from our lives and from those of the ones we love Cancer is currently the second largest killer in the US and the third biggest killer in the UK. One in three cases are directly linked to a poor diet, physical inactivity, weight or chemical exposure. The American Cancer Society says that only 5%, 5 to 10% are from gene defects. Okay, so only 5 to 10% of cancers are actually hereditary. That means 90 to 95% of cancer cases are under our control. It's what we put into our homes, it's what we allow into our homes. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health studied 2,983 ingredients in products in our homes and they found 884 toxic ingredients. 314 of those ingredients caused biological mutations, 218 caused reproductive issues, 778 were toxic to the human body. 146 of those ingredients they knew caused cancer tumours, but they were still allowed in common cleaning supplies in the US and in the UK. These are things that might be in your cupboards right now. Even organic cleaners have some known carcinogens that are just naturally derived. You know, some things, some of these things that cause cancer are come from natural sources. 20 seconds after exposure, chemicals are found in measurable amounts in the human body. The average woman applies 300 chemicals to her body every single day, 80 of them are before breakfast. The top 10 most dangerous chemicals in our home include air fresheners for like 70 years. Aluminium has been directly linked with Alzheimer's disease, which is currently the second biggest killer in the UK. 
And what's the number one pollutant in the family home? Washing detergent and fabric softener. You know, when you wash your clothes in it, it sits on your skin and then the gases seep out from these clothes in your wardrobe all night long into the air where you and your family are sleeping and breathing. You ha have a look at the latest boxes, certainly in the UK, when you buy washing detergent, you know, laundry detergent now, they're in these boxes that you can hardly open. They're so childproof, it's unbelievable. Why do they need to be like that? It's because of the toxic things that are in them. They don't say that. They just say that you've got to keep them away from your children because children have died from eating those, especially those washing pots. Children have been really, really ill. And this is the reason why. It's because they have really horrible things in them. So there are 100,000 chemicals on the market today. Toxic Substance Control Act of 1976 grandfathered them in, but these chemicals have not had any safety tests and we know very little about the side effects. So a lot of these things have been around for a really, really long time. Of the chemicals that were tested, toxic labelling is only required if 50% or more of the animals they tested on died. I'll say that again. Of the chemicals that were tested, when they did all these tests a long time ago, toxic labelling is only required if 50% or more of the animals they were tested on died. Under the Trade Secrets Act and the TSCA, manufacturers are allowed to keep a lot of these ingredients secret so no one steals the recipes. Okay, that's written into law so that there's no um, industrial espionage, so people can't steal each other's recipes, but that means that the ingredients are secret. Dr. Samuel Epstein, who's a chairman of the Cancer Prevention Coalition, says it's unthinkable that women would knowingly inflict such exposures on their infants and children and themselves if products were routinely labelled with explicit, war explicit warnings of cancer risk, but they're not labelled. Since the 1940s, prostate cancer is up 200%, thyroid cancer is up 155%, brain cancer is up 70%, and the American Cancer Society estimates a 50% rise in cancer rates by 2021. There's a standard set for non-industrial non buildings for chemical exposure. For formaldehyde, it's 0.75 parts per million. That's not even 1%. So for non-industrial buildings, there are these regulations that mean that certain chemicals can't be used in them, can't be used in certain industrial environments, but we don't have that for domestic environments. The average home has an astonishing level of 50 parts per million. That's 50 times what's allowed, but it's not regulated because it's in your private home. 409 cleaning solution has 12,000 parts per million. It's no wonder the quality of air inside your home is five to seven times more toxic than outdoor air quality. So what happens when your body is chemically overloaded? Well, you might see it as something as catastrophic as cancer, but most of us feel it in other ways. Lethargy, inability to focus, sleep trouble, chronic inflammation, unexplained pain, fibromyalgia, skin issues, adult acne, hormone issues, hot flushes, stress, anxiety, fear. If you face any of these issues, it's time to show chemicals the door. You can control what you allow within the walls of your home. If you missed it at the beginning, my name's Emma Haig and I'm a Proctor Gallagher consultant and I'm committed to living and showing others how to live a life of true prosperity, true prosperity in all areas of life. And I really like Edwin Gaines' definition of prosperity, which is having a vitally alive physical body, relationships that are satisfying, nurturing and honest, Work that we love so much, it doesn't feel like work and all the money we can spend. And Young Living Essential Oils will help you achieve prosperity in every single one of these areas, both through their use and through building an essential oils business, if you want to do that, that you are 100% in love with, that can sustain your family for the rest of their lives. And I've put together the Prosperous Oilers programme, especially for people who join my Prosperous Oilers team, where I'll be using my own years of business experience as well as the coaching and mentoring materials get from my mentor, Bob Proctor, to lead our team to individual and team prosperity over the coming months and years. 
Young Living is an essential oils company based out of Utah in the US. It's the largest essential oils company in the world and a pioneer in the art of distillation. The methods are copied all over the world and D. Gary Young was seen as the grandfather of essential oils. They produce the most oils on the planet and they do it right through their exclusive seed to seal process. And I have a number of upcoming lessons explaining this process which are all included in my Prosperous Oilers programme. So if you join our team you'll get access to all of these training programmes, all of these training videos and we're also going to be doing a 12-day boot camp on how to get your business growing quickly. The first time I listened to a class like this one, I knew that this was the way I wanted to be living. I knew that it was part of my life goal, that I wanted to incorporate it into that, and that I wanted to live you know, as long and healthy and happy a life as I possibly could so that I could achieve all the things that I wanted to achieve. Um, and I knew that the vehicle to do that um, was, was this. Um, and it really has become my mission to get as many people as possible experiencing the benefits of these oils and growing their own businesses from home without having to pay up, pay out thousands and thousands of dollars up front because a lot of business opportunities will ask you to do that. So I bought my premium starter kit straight after the class and I started right where you are right now. So taking this chemical free living idea just one day at a time getting rid of one chemical out of my home at a time. Um, that's how I started. You can do this too. It's about taking small steps and saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to allow these things into my home. Imagine the legacy. I was thinking the other day about, you know, I developed, I've created this kind of, um, these habits in my kids to diffuse thieves instead of using candles, to diffuse it around the house to put thieves on the, the um, feet when they go to bed on a night time, to use lavender to help them sleep, to use peppermint to help wake them up. These are things that, these, these have been created in my kids. These habits are healthy, life-changing for me, habits that they're now going to grow up with and it will just be a part of what they do when they're older and that makes me feel amazing, you know. You can't control all the places you're exposed, but you are the gatekeeper of your home. And if you teach your kids these habits, they're going to be the gatekeeper of their home. You do have control over that. And it's something that you have control of. You decide what comes into your house. So learn alongside our team. Let, let us guide you through the process in simple, easy steps. So step one is to get started with the Young Living Starter Kit. It's a diffuser and 11 different bottles of oil. It's the place that I began my oils journey. There's some of the most common oils on the earth for supporting different systems in the body. And they have just one ingredient. Lemon is just cold pressed lemon rinds. Frankincense is resin properly steam distilled at the right temperature to make essential oil. Lavender is freshly distilled at the peak of the harvest with thousands of uses in the home. Let us come alongside you and train you how to get rid of those chemicals out of yours and your family's life and how to build an amazing business that you love, you can do this and we're going to be doing it with you. So start by heading to youngliving.com, click on become a member and fill in your details. So um, you will need to enter the ID, the member ID of the person who sent you to this webinar or the person who sent you to this video. You need to enter their member ID in the enroller and sponsor field. If you have any trouble, you can email me at support at emmahague.com. I will gladly help you through that process. Um, make sure you write down the login details that you create on that page. I won't be able to log in again. And as soon as you register, I'll get a notification if you've joined my team. And I'll be in touch to arrange a welcome chat with you to explain how we'll move forward and to walk through the starter kit. I'll also be sending you a special welcome pack to get you started. I'm really excited about moving forward with us. You will be asked during registration which starter kit you want. My favourite is the Dewdrop diffuser, so make sure you choose the one with the correct plug. So if you're in the UK, you need to choose a Dewdrop diffuser that says UK plug. It's the one I have on constantly in my home. I've got three of them now. My friends and family are always commenting on how pretty it is and how amazing the house always smells. 
So um, do remember to make sure you order the one with the right electrical plug because we have had problems when people have picked the wrong one. I'd also encourage you to sign up for the Essential Rewards Programme. If you are taking this seriously and you really want to keep the chemicals out of your home um, and out of your life, it's more than just about getting a few oils into your home in a diffuser. It's about a chemical-free lifestyle. It's about keeping up with it and making sure that you're swapping things out a little bit of time. So this is step one, okay? The ordering the starter kit is step one. Step two is starting to swap out some of the chemicals in your home. The benefit to essential reward is that you get to pick the oils or the products, um, you know, laundry liquid, washing powder, hand soap, whatever it is that you want to order that month, you get to pick whatever comes um, to your door every single month. You simply swap out the things that you're currently using for those made with pure essential oils and you get paid 10% back for everything you order in new products if you're in the Essential Rewards Program. So you get 10% back. For the first three months, you get 10% back. That goes up to 20% after three months. You get 20% of the value of your order back in rewards points, which you can then spend, spend on other products. So that's 20, 10%, then 20% back on your washing powder, hand soap, shampoo and conditioner, Beads cleaner, you know, that's the only thing I use to clean my house. One of the best choices I ever made. No supermarket has ever paid me to buy my cleaning supplies and personal care products and bath products and everything else from them. If you'd like to add that to your order, I recommend the Feed Starter Kit for your first essential rewards order because it contains just about everything you need to get started and get rid of nearly every chemical cleaner in your home all in one go. So Choose the premium starter kit today to get started. And then for your first essential rewards order next month, I would suggest that you go for the feed starter kit and start to replace all those chemicals in your home. This is something that you need to take seriously. You know, no one is watching your home but you. As I said earlier, you are the gatekeeper. And I would bet there are things in your home right now that you're exposed to every single day that could be killing you and your family and the thing is it is totally preventable so where do you start you start small you start slowly you start with what you're convicted in convicted on let me give you a really simple tip with your food flip the labels over and start reading the ingredients you know, if you can't pronounce any of the ingredients don't eat it doesn't mean you can't have ice cream. Just go for ice cream made with milk and vanilla and sugar and eggs, you know, real stuff, instead of a list of 20 odd items that you don't recognize. With your home, start with the biggest offenders first, your laundry powder or liquid, your dishwasher tablets, your cleaning supplies, your candles and plug-ins. Go home and throw the candles and plug-ins in the rubbish bag bin. Swap them out with that gorgeous diffuser that's coming in the premium starter kit. And fill it with pure essential oils. It's just a better choice. Young Living has oil infused, feed cleaner, laundry cleaner and hand soap. It's affordable, it's simple to use. Add it to your essential rewards order once you have that starter kit in your hands. This is about small, simple baby steps. Take one month at a time and slowly start to swap some of this stuff out. Maybe the first month you focus solely on feed cleaner and you get rid of your flash and your 409 and your window lean and your bleach. You can start that by simply adding a bottle of Thieves Cleaner to your order to replace them all. Go and wipe down the whole of your kitchen with it, knowing that you just boosted your immune system instead of taxing your liver inhaling those chemicals. Next month, swap out some laundry soap or some hand soap. For month three, focus on your personal care products, deodorant, shampoo, toothpaste. For month four, focus on beauty supplies like face wash, makeup, Every day you leave your makeup on, your skin ages by seven days. Use a chemical free option to get it off. So I started my own journey with Young Living just a few months ago now with that starter kit and I will never go back to using anything else. Every oil you use is a chemical you're not using. You matter, your family matters, your friends matter and you can take control of your health. You don't have to feel the way you do. You don't have to feel tired all the time and groggy and bloated and exhausted. 
get rid of the chemicals, immerse yourself in our world of pure essential oils and get on your own path to true prosperity alongside my Prosperous Oilers team. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for listening. Hope you'll join us. Remember, you can go to youngliving.com, click on become a member. You need to enter the member ID as the enroller and sponsor, the member ID of the person that sent you here. And I will look forward to speaking to you soon to walk through the starter kit. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.